everybody, welcome to The Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell was really just to showcase that there's not one right way to homeschool. And we do that by bringing homeschoolers together from around the world to share their take on a different topic each month. This month's topic is one that I am ridiculously excited about because we are all going to be sharing our favorite games. If you're new around here or if you don't know, I am obsessed with games. We own over 500. We incorporate them into our homeschool and we have family game nights almost weekly. So I'm beyond elated to share all of our favorite games with you. And I cannot wait to watch everybody's video in the playlist, which I will link in the description box to see what games they're going to be sharing because, well, my Amazon cart just might fill up. Now, because we have so many games, picking favorites was nearly impossible. Like I always joke that I can totally pick a favorite kid since, well, I only have one. Picking a favorite game is torture. So what we did is we decided to each pick one game in a few different categories. So today I'm going to be sharing three top picks. So I picked one, Emily picked one, and Kevin picked one in math, language arts, science, geography, and history, family fun, and then our most played recently. So that's going to be 18 games that I'm going to be sharing with you today. First up, we have math. So our first pick for math is Ads Monday. I absolutely love this game because you can play on different levels. So there are different cards that have either one star at the top, two stars at the top, or three stars at the top, and you can all play different levels. So unlike some games where I feel like I have to force myself to slow down or even dumb down a little bit, this gives us the ability to all play at the level that we're at. So Emily can play a little bit easier and it's equally as challenging for her as it is for me. As she grows, it can change. And I love that it challenges you to think outside the box. So the goal is that you are trying to use the numbers on the outside to make a math problem that gives you the answer of the number on the inside of the card. So it's really making you think outside the box when it comes to math. It's not just a simple math equation, but you're really having to think like, what can I do to come up with that number? And I love that it's making you think about math in different ways and then it makes it fun. Next we have, sorry, I knew it was going to make that noise. Money bags. This is Emily's pick. She is obsessed with it. She loves it. I think it's near and dear to her heart because it really did help make money make sense to her. Um, and it just made, you know, counting coins and being able to make change so much easier than trying to learn it with pen and paper. So this is a huge recommendation from us. If you are trying to teach your kids money specifically change or up to a dollar. And then last we have prime climb. This is another one that you can do all four operations. You can work addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with it. And it really does kind of help you meet your child where they're at. It's also luck at the same time. So it's not one where just because your math is better than the person next to you that you're automatically going to win. And it's just a really fun way to practice all of those math skills. Next, we have language arts. So we have three different language arts games here for you. The first one is Word Around. This one is great for vocabulary and even spelling. So when you see the back of the card, this is black. That means that there's going to be a word on the black loop and you are racing to see who can figure out what the word is first. So you would have all the cards stacked like this and you're like, okay, it's going to be a red one. So you flip it over don't drop it. And you race to see who can figure out whatever word is hidden around that specific circle. It is a lot of fun, um, especially working those eye muscles, trying to read a word around. It's great for reading skills. It's great for vocabulary. Um, and it's really great for spelling because you're like, oh, okay, that's how that's spelled. Next we have possum. This is, it's very similar to Yahtzee. So of course this is the one that Kevin picked, but you're trying to find words that fit into different parts of speech when you roll the dice. So you're looking for three, four, and five letter nouns, three, four, and five letter verbs, three, four, and five letter adjectives, and then five and six letter any. So it's just kind of a fun dice rolling game. But again, you're working on spelling and parts of speech. And I really like that 
they're also working on math secretly because they have to add up their score at the end. So that's one of those games that kind of has a dual purpose. And then the last language arts game I have is Super Sleuth. This is a really fun game because you are working on different multiple meaning words. So you have synonyms, antonyms, homophones, and multiple meaning words. And you get these cute little cards and it has questions that you answer. And then you have to have your magnifying glass to look for the answer on the front of the card. And then you collect little badges for each one you answer correctly. So it's just a really fun way to practice different multiple meaning words. It helps a ton with vocabulary. And again, trying to master what each of those different things are. Next, we have science. So the first one we have is scabs and guts. This is a really fun trivia game where you're working around and asking really funny questions and trivia questions about, I mean, it's just hilarious. Like the guts ones, it talks about farts, which means Emily loves it. It's hilarious. This same company makes a bugs and slugs one that is equally fun. So depending on whether your kids are more interested in human body or bugs and slugs, you could get whichever one suited their interests more. Then we have Wildcraft, which is an herbal adventure. This was one that we used with Waldox Wizards and Wands Herbology, and it became a favorite. You are working your way up the mountain to get some berries for grandma, and along the way, different things happen, like you get diarrhea, and you have to figure out what herb would help fix that problem. The best part about it is that this particular game is cooperative, which means you're all working together. So either you all win or you all lose. You're not trying to like beat each other, which is really great, especially if you have kids who are kind of in the sore loser stage, which I find happens a lot between about four and six. And this game is four and up. So it's kind of the perfect game for that. And then we also have bird bingo. Now I love all of these bingos. Like I'm obsessed. Bird bingo, bug bingo, cat, dog, monkey, ocean. They are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just 110% on the illustrations. And not only are they beautiful, they are also very educational because each one comes with the gorgeous bingo cards and also a guide to whatever it is. So this is a guide to the birds and it tells you more about each of the birds. And so what we do is when we call a bird out for our bingo cards, we take the time to read the information about them in the guidebook. So we are playing a game and learning more about them. And then, like I said, there are dinosaurs, birds, bugs, monkeys, cats, dogs, ocean. Um, I believe there is now an Australia's Deadliest Animals, which is on my wish list. We own almost all of them and they're all equally gorgeous. For history and geography, we have the Professor Noggin Trivia Decks. These are one of my personal favorite because they come in so many different topics and there are varying difficulties of questions on the back. So you have easy, and you have hard and it really does feel game like because it has the dice component where you get to roll the dice to see which question you're going to be answering. But I love that there is one for almost any historical unit study we could possibly do. So if we were going to do explorers, they have one for that. This is U.S. history. They have presidents. They have ancient civilizations. I mean, they have medieval like there's one for almost everything. And I love that. So I love that we can be doing trivia and playing games and learning history at the same time. There's also even one for art history, which is fantastic. Next, we have Scrambling the States of America. This is super fun because it comes with a book that explains to you why the states got all scrambled up. And then your job is to kind of like unscramble them. One of the things I love about this game is that unlike a few other kind of American state based games, you don't have to know anything going into it. So I find some games are a little bit cumbersome if you don't already know your states and capitals or you don't know the information. And this isn't one of them. So you don't have to know it going in. You can know very little, if not nothing about the states and the capitals and the geography of us and still play this and have fun and be learning while you're doing it. So I really like that, that it's a very introductory game, but you're still learning a ton. Last, we have Trekking the World by Underdog Games. There is also a Trekking the Parks, 
We love both of them equally. So whether you want to explore the world or explore the national parks, both are absolutely gorgeous, very well made, amazing games. And soon they're even going to be releasing a traveling through history, I believe is what it's called. It's a history game though. And I cannot wait to get my hands on that one. I already did the Kickstarter funding because I'm so excited to have this kind of quality in a history based game. All right, so these are our family favorites. They are the one that we tend to gravitate to the most over all times. This is not gonna be a surprise to any of you guys. Yahtzee is Kevin's pick. He will pick Yahtzee 99.9% .9 of the time. It is his absolute favorite game. It's also how Emily learned her math facts, so it's kind of near and dear to our heart. Next, we have Quirkle. I'm gonna pick this one 99.9% .9 of the time. It is my absolute favorite game. Um, and another thing I love about it is that you can play it with very little kids because all you have to do is know colors and shapes. There's no reading involved in this game. So you can teach pretty young kids to play this one. And then Emily's that she's gonna pick 99.9% .9 of the time is Dragonwood. This game is tried and true. We all actually love it, but it is played very often at our house. And it is another one that you really can't go wrong with. Um, it's one that we purchase for a lot of birthdays because it's one that all the kids love. This and Sleeping Queens, I would say, are my pretty much like go-to birthday gifts. So there you go, you just got a bonus game. And last, I'm gonna share with you the games that have been played the most frequently lately because I find that we tend to get into a cycle or not a rut, I don't like to call it a rut, but kind of where we're picking the same things, we find a new game that we enjoy and we're wanting to play it on repeat. And so these are the three that have been pulled frequently for family game nights recently. We have Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. It is very, very fun. Racco, which is a little nostalgic, um, but it's still, again, really fun and they're quick gameplay. And, sorry. And then Clue. Um, the original Clue would be our favorite. This is as close to the original as I think you can get now. And we really like to play it and then watch the movie Clue. So that's typically like a family movie and game night that we like. That's it. I did my absolute best to narrow it down. So you got 18 of our favorite games in different categories and then a bonus game. So a total of 19 games in this video. Please tell me in the comments what your favorite games are so I can add them to my list if we don't already own them. And don't forget to check out the description box for the playlist of all of the other people sharing their favorite games.